How's it going? I'm Edix here with Lulu, and we're bringing you some fine Overwatch on this Wednesday evening. We're here with Owlet and Storybook Villains versus Outcast. Two one and zero teams going at it today. Lulu, what do you have to say? I, I couldn't say it any better myself, Edix. I think this is going to be a good match, and I'm hoping we're going to get five maps. Right, and both of these teams coming off of a win, their first their first outing this Sunday. Um, both looking fairly dominant with Outcast beating Burn 3 to 0 and the Storybook Villains taking it to Flashpoint 4 to 0. Um, do you think both of these teams are going to bring in a dominant look today? Ready for battle. I, I think both teams are going to have have their maps that they really like and I think this could be a close series. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm excited to see how these two go at it and who's going to remain undefeated. Um Going into this attack, there's some interesting compositions coming out from both teams. Let's see if they run with this. Um, storybook villains look like they're going for the hog. You can also see the bastion. Pros. And now, you, now that they swamp to the sigma. So both teams going to be rolling out here on fairly similar compositions. Outcast taking position, or. Outcast taking position on the point first, both setting up shields. Maywall coming in the back as Nifa drops down first. Brutal alone taking out Haze and the close quarters combat seems to be going the way early of the storybook villains. They just got wiped, like they kind of just fanned around and it's almost like they forgot to place down their shield because Right, the approach has to be absolutely Exactly. The approach has to be absolutely spot on. And once you get in that close quarter range, it most of these fights are all dictated by how the first pick goes. So here come Outcast coming back through, looking to rotate through this far angle. Need to be careful of boots here. Approaching onto the point, Hyper Knight trying to find a location to put his shield and slowly moseying their way onto the point. And Maywall catches Reaper on the story but villains out and bola bulls goes down a boop onto nifa oh, and an an a beautiful anti-nade is going to send this whole fight into chaos and going the way of story but villains just stays on the points and fights cleaned up that was actually really good uh well executed by uh outcast but they kind of got unlucky with that reaper getting booped off the map i think Everything was lined up for him to just clean up, but like I said, these, clean teams, up when you're off the map. these teams have to be so so careful of getting booped off. Now the outcasts will have a nano boost going into this, and they're approaching and they shield down outside of the point. This will be on cooldown for quite a while, and here comes the gravitic oh blocks from Storybook villains, and a huge Reaper ultimate is going to send this fight into the books as well. Storybook villains looking absolutely dominant. 
It's really in one fight territory now. One or two fights. Well, good news for Outcasts. They got the male and they got the nano. Exactly, they and have... But Story of Villains has the male of their own. And they got the beat, so... We have a well, super actually, more favorable for... Villains, they just have to get onto the point soon. A blizzard coming onto the point, and this should be the call to rush in. A brutal alone racing out. The Maywall to block all the follow up, and a nano and a nano blossom coming in from Nepo is gonna clean up this fight and put the outcast on the board. Finally, ninety nine to zero. Some great patience from Nepo, waiting out the beat and then letting the ultimate rip. And that's the key. Ba baiting out ultimates with baiting out the sound barrier with the blizzard seemed to be the way to get Nifa in there, doing his work. So now, out, so now, storybook villains will be on the retake for the first time. He's gonna throw in blizzard preemptively. The only one to possibly follow up is Brutal, who has to wraith out when he's in trouble. Sharp shot to win comes back in. The gravitic flux from the oh outcast is gonna go in, and the boop, the brute from Kusagari. It's gonna completely turn this fight around. That looks so good for the outcasts, and this is the map. Man, two fight winning boobs on two different fights. Like that, that's just gotta sting. And you you have to be so careful, especially on the on Ilios in particular. This is this is Lucio's playground. You have to you have to be watching out at all times for this. So fairly clean round coming out from Storybook Villains. Let's see how the outcasts respond if they'll make any compositional swaps for well. But we're just feeling getting killed environmentally. And so important on this map in particular. Even more so, I'd say. Now, the outcasts look like they're gonna be running. Maybe, maybe they're showing Bastion, but I'm not sure if either team's gonna run this. I mean, we've seen a lot of Bastion in the Overwatch League, particularly from, from New York. It's true, and they look like they're going to be coming out with the Bastion straight out of spawn. Let's see how this plays into Storybook Villains comp, who's, who are going for the Pharah. So, spotting them out. Spam will begin. And now, it's all down to it's all down to the Outcast getting a quick pick with the Bastion, because if they allow them to approach, this fight's going to be over. So, you see Storybook Villains approaching with the Maywall. Now, we're having some space to work with. All in on the Bastion, on to Nifa. And trades coming out, but the focus fire in the Bastion was just too good. Brutal out missed the wall, but he does enough to distract the Bastion and kind of baits him to turn away from the rest of the team. Yeah, and a more important the point is going Bastion for this Bastion too. strategy, let Sharpshot to win already build a barrage. So he has this coming in for their next engagement, and honestly, without anything to stop it, this might be another wipe. All down to Sharp Shot to win. Finding the angle. A pull comes oh, this in. This is gonna be big. No one's noticing him. No one sees him. Two picks off is all that matters. But Arco getting a kill onto in, in a loco. But follow up. The man advantage comes through. Hyper Knight using Fortify to maybe stay alive some more. Contest on a point, but it's not gonna be enough. The barrage. So now, Storybook Villains have an ultimate advantage. A Blizzard will be coming up soon on both sides. Arco a little bit closer to his, and a Nano Boost now ready for the side of Outcasts. But Coalescence in this meta is so, so incredibly strong. It can buy at least another 10% even if it doesn't get any kills. Oh, big kill on Nifa got get Sharp Shot. The Bongo getting placed down really, oh, in a really far position, blocked by the Maywall. Now, the side of Storybook Villains has to back off without the angles. You know, a complete fight has evolved right here. Outcast getting the picks, though. Able to work. Able to, like, work the sight lines a little bit better. And now, in a loco, and Kugo Gumari, Kusogari, my apologies, um, you're gonna have to try to hide from the impending doom. The Gravitic Flux used to drain them up. And Nifa goes down from the Gravitic Flux. Sharp Shot to win gets a kill on Arco. This fight is turning around. Bola Bulls into the well. Everybody's falling. Gravitic Flux comes out from the side of Outcasts. Coming down. It's pure chaos. 
but the only one left is Hey, Storybook Village pulling out this fight in the absolute just chaos. And now, now only one fight left. How are they supposed to win this? Well, they, they, got, bring they, got the, they, got, they gotta get the mail down first, but... And here comes the barrage. The mail comes through, but nobody's there to follow up. Bull of Bull's getting booped off. It's still... No, the cleanup will happen. A clean map win for Storybook Villains. It seemed like Storybook Villains had a great plan to get the Bastion. They knew how to... They knew how to minimize the Bastion's effectiveness by getting out of his sight lines and... Engaging up close where they can get the, the surround on him. And I think I think sharp shot to win is from this play of the game to look at his ultimate percentage just building. I mean, there's up. no one shooting at him. He's just free to do this all day. Absolutely uncontested. Sex tuple kill coming through from sharp shot to win. So the spam damage and the in the focus fire, the approach was just too clean for the side of the outcast to handle. Right. So in an easy a relatively easy map one win for the side of storybook villains how do you think that the outcast can bring this one back well it i think it, i think it's pretty obvious to many of our viewers but if they're if uh storybook villains are gonna run this fair then uh, then outcasts are gonna need to find some sort of answer whether it's even just changing their play style to just like pay attention to the fair with like a sigma shield or Get, and put that put some pressure on that Farah, because you can't have your free shooting like that all day, especially from that close. And right, even even one solution could be to just push past the Farah fire and trying to get your trying to get your team in there in the close quarters fight and win before the Farah's effectiveness can really become apparent. So it's all about avoiding all of that spam. So if you can it's all about mitigating sharp shot to win's effectiveness right now. Yeah, I think if you're on the side of the outcast. So moving in soon to our second map of Hanamura, what do you expect to see out of both sides? I think we're gonna see some bunker bastion and pretty not much they're gonna stick on the Sigma, the Orissa, and just hunker down, play some good old fashioned bunker. Right. Um, I'm also, do you think that any symmetry stat strategies will come out? Any teleports? Definitely. I, if they if they see the Bastion, I'm going to assume that the other team's going to just pull out Symmetra just to try to TP away into a better position against that Bastion who can just melt bases with minimal effort. And I'm curious to see if, if one team, if one team tries to attack without the Bastion or without the Symmetra, how they're going to try to attack a, a like a, a bunker set up on the platform. Like so many teams have tried it. We've seen throughout some um, just watching the Overwatch League and the second season of Outlet is a lot of teams running Bastion and you know on, on this map on defense and people trying to figure it out and trying to see, okay, how do I attack this? How am I supposed to dislodge them when in reality a symmetric can be the best way to do it? So it will be Storybook Villains on the attack first, and they look like they're showing Symmetra early. I'm very happy I don't see a Bastion. It's always, Honestly, it's always fun to see more <laughs> dynamic play and not something where you just sit sit around and just like... Just wait for your Bastion to kill things. And so, one thing we have seen... I, I gotta give props to the Outcasts. For trusting their own defense, and it looks like they're going to be holding up close at the doors. So, and in terms of, and we know that Shad loves to play the junk rat, so that's probably a big determining factor in why they've chosen to do this. Oh, we'll come down early. Should be back up in time, but Ooh. that allows the that allows the side of Storybook Villains oh, to play more aggressively. In? The TP comes through, but the, the Orisa shield is already used. And that means that they have no protection from the crossfire. Three going down already, and the cooldown communication just wasn't there. They were more than ready for that TP. You saw the nade coming out. You saw Shad already in position to, to just AoE down whoever crosses through that. Absolutely. Do you, think they're gonna, 
you think they're gonna stick on the symmetry here and try it again? Maybe like bullets. Nope, because they already switched. There we go. We this get the, the reboot. This is the top tier analysis you get from Nose Assistant Coach. I will. <laughs> Yeah, so the Smetra clearly, they were ready for it, and not also going to try it to just try to replicate yeah. the best they had as well. And look, the side of the Outcast has nothing to deal with it. And here they come over the Maywall, spamming in. Brutal alone, getting frozen, getting rocked, but oh, barely goes down to the, to the hands of Haze. And oh, Cole best Lessons all of the game coming out. through. Coalescence Cole... comes out from Lit Cat, the... The revive comes out of Brutal alone. How could they let that happen? Hyper Knight goes down to Brutal alone, and now they're all split off, zoned off. The May gets the Nano, but split on the point. Everyone going down to Brutal alone. And this fight is over. There you can just see why where his ult is just so damn good. You can just you just point out the enemy team's direction, and you either melt faces or you get like all the space you want. Only thing that can stop it really is. Any form of crowd control and maybe like an insta kill from, say, Junkrat's tire. Exactly. But the one positive sign from the Outcast after this point, A cap, is look at their ultimate bank. They have the Sigma ult, they have the Rip tire coming up on Beat and Blizzard. Uh, I think, I think we're going to just see a tire mail right here and try to clean this efficiently. Right, you see Outcast holding back into point, playing for their, their mail into Sigma ult. Staying in the safety behind the Sigma Shield, but frozen. I'm not sure about that one. I think the tire would have been more efficient. And Storybook Villains getting spl or splitting up the side of the Outcast on point. The picks going their way, the tire only getting lit. Got. Valkyrie comes out, Shad kills Sharp Shot to win, but the kills are all going the way of Storybook Villains. Now it is five on point, so we'll see if the stall can actually come through. But no. Now it's only Jervert on points. And we'll have a May coming into stall. Nifa on the May. A, a Death Blossom comes out from Brutal alone to keep clearing. Just Hyper Knight on the ball. At this point, it's all about stall. We'll see if they can find the picks. And now Storybook Villains. Yeah, don't you just love 2CP? It, the greatest <laughs> bat mode in the game. Thank you, Jeff. I thank you for for that. gracing us with this beautiful, beautiful game type. But in all seriousness, I don't. I'm not sure if I like that May Sigma Alt combo. The Sigma Alt practically just lifted them out of the May Alt. Was... Right, and the side of the Outcast engaged with the May Alt into the into the Sigma Alt, so it kind of mitigated the effectiveness of both ultimates at the same time. So I think the tire would have been a lot better. You got everyone slowed down from the blizzard and then which makes it easy for to for the team to just get hit their shots and get get the picks needed to kinda stop the snowball from storybook. The keys to that fight I think were the the misuse of, of the blizzard and the and the flux from the side of the outcast and also the boops mm -hmm. from Kusagari getting members of the outcast split off and half of them down and half of them still on point where they got just focused down by brutal alone and sharp shot to win and there's really been no answer to this fear at all coming from story click villains absolutely not the outcasts need to figure something out quickly with a time bank of three minutes and 45 seconds they're gonna have to find the answers both teams going with the with Pretty much a standard comp, standard compositions. Yeah, it looks pretty. This between the Anna and the and the Moira right here, with uh, Storybook Villains really preferring the Moira, whereas Outcast really preferring the Anna. And why do you think that is? Well, personally, I think the Moira is better just because her you just charge that ult so fast, and the coalescence just like takes up so much space at the very worst, but. I, I think Outcasts value the anti from the Ana and... The spam fight just being won outright by the side of Storybook Villains. Oh, Sharp Shot to win almost going down, but not quite. Not going down to the side of Nifo. Uh, that was a very decisive win coming out from Storybook Villains.
And at a certain point, at a certain point, they're just getting mechanically outplayed in some of these like spam spam contests. Maywall comes out from Neva, trying to get his team into position, but they're really the outside. The outcast is really just posturing around the the choke. Shad getting chased out as Reaper. And again, no one's looking at sharp shot to win. He's just free shooting from the top corner. Exactly, it's they're getting here. He's gonna get his all like really fast right here. Yeah, Hyper Knight. Despite the wall coming out from Nefa splitting off, um, Lit Cat for a moment, it's not seeming to matter. Dragon comes out, finds CRX Wolves. Shad goes down to sharp shot to win. Nobody is contesting sharp shot to win. They have to find an answer to this crossfire that Storybook Builds is putting down quickly. I'll tell you, if I saw this in like comp games, I think I'd tilt off the face of the earth because having an uncontested DPS just just it just spells death for your team. And I think Shad is trying to go behind the back line, but still, look at Shark Shot to win. Nobody shooting through the window. Here. Just. Just having the time of his life, just finally gets contest from Lucio. Bull of Bulls puts down a bongo Shad in the back line, ready to break it up though. And Shad getting chased by Brutal Lone, getting killed in the back line. Well, the Flux comes out, a beat in response from the Outcasts. Nothing seems to come of it. Mainly buying more time for Brutal Lone to come back from after killing Shad. Outcast is gonna have to back up and wait. A blizzard comes out, a beat oh, in response. Wall. The wall. CRX Wolves finally goes up to just boop him, but it's more of an annoyance. An anti into the flux is gonna get two Shad killing Bull of Bulls, Haze killing Kusagari, but Brutal alone finding the picks through the blizzard. <sighs> the ultimates. Man. Sharp shot to win must be like just grinning from ear to ear. There's just <laughs> there's just nobody contesting him, just an occasional Lucio booping him off, but Absolutely not. And you see the side of Storybook Village. And there's coming no back ult to Outcast really come back and take this point with. They they they're gonna have the they're gonna have the Bago and maybe the Reaper ult soon, but CRX Wolves sure away from his team. Getting punished. They were trying the, the side of Storybook Villains was trying to buy time. For Hyper Knight to get back, and CRX Wolves was trying to capitalize, but it may have been a little bit too far. As team has to back off, they have another fight. There's just there's just not much time for story or for Outcast to really have a good push at this. They they might need someone to just rush out there and touch. They need to all rush in as a team and place down Bongo and hopefully get and the focus Onslaught down that they need. Really just stop any. Do they come pushing through? Uh, the order just isn't there. The dragon comes out now. It's just Gerber and Shadow left. They can't even touch the point. What a clean defense from Storybook Villains. Totally one-sided. Outcasts are gonna have to change something about their game plan. Because right now it's just getting absolutely snuffed out by Storybook Villains. And right, part of, part of the issue. good antis, but. Yeah. They're gonna need to find a way to utilize that nano better. And, and part of the sort issue of part of the issue is that the outcasts seem a little bit timid to push into the to the wall of shields that is the Erasa Sigma from the side of Storybook Villains and are really paying for that because they're moseying around and letting themselves get picked apart by sharp shot to win. Uh, and so they need to they need to play more aggressively, have more trust in themselves, and really get in forward. I think that's the change they could make into hopefully taking these next two maps. And the longer they wait to to initiate their attacks, the longer that Hanzo is going to be playing what I like to call the Hanzo lottery, where he can just spam down forever and ever, and then like you're bound to get a lucky headshot at at some point and just like stop their plant stop their plans from working at all. <laughs> the Hanzo Lottery. Care to yeah, explain the Hanzo Lottery. I, as you can tell, I have very negative opinions about Hanzo as a hero. And where did this come from? Probably solo queue. 
if I had to say, <laughs> just the amount of times where the enemy Hanzo will just randomly spam, and then somehow I'll just walk into an arrow and die, and just throw my keyboard out the window. Was this made better or worse by the by the removal worse. of Scatter Arrow into Storm now? It definitely been made worse. Because at least with Scatter Arrow, I feel like... You kind of know you're going to die once he uses it. But with the Rapid Fire, you, there's like that little bit of hope. And it's the hope that kills you. <laughs> you're just like, okay, I can, I can strafe out of this. And then you just get hit by headshot with the Rapid Fire Arrow and... You look at the kill cam and you're like, wow, this guy wasn't even aiming. And Well, hope is definitely what these, speaking of, hope is definitely what the side of the outcasts really need right now after being down 2-0 to zero at the half. Um, Lulu, do you have anything to say? It seems we're going into, anything else to say? We're going into a little bit of a halftime before we'll come back. I think, I think either outcast has to change, change their comp a little bit to maybe play around this Anna a little bit more? Or I think they, as well as the Anna is playing for Outcast, they might just have to go with the Moira just so they can just get that quick alt charge and then play around their Coalescence. Because Absolutely. They're getting these good antis, but it just doesn't seem like they're playing around them effectively enough. It's, to where it's they just can really just of, clean up fights. It's a lack of capitalization issues. They need to be willing to go forward and really take take the opportunities that they're presented and just run with them. Uh, the, another alternative is they could kind of have their Reaper TP behind TP behind, behind Storybook villains and just pop the pop the Nano on the flanking Reaper just to get just to create some sort of space. Right. It seems that with without cast space is at a space is at a premium right now. They're just getting picked apart by the crossfires. They they feel like they can't move in. That they're like losing the shield wars at every point. Somebody's got to deal with sharp shot to win because I, I I don't think I could go on a, on another map if I see him just free shooting all day from high ground. Will it or infuriate you too much? <laughs> I'm sorry. Will it infuriate you too much? I'd be pretty mad. <laughs> but yeah, like... Can I hardly hear a little bit of my angry voice? What does your angry voice sound like? Angry? <laughs> I wonder if it would sound like some kind of, like, angry sarcasm. What because I haven't, I haven't heard mean? your... You got the... You got the resting sarcastic voice. <laughs> what does that mean? You don't understand. Resting sarcastic <laughs> voice. Yeah. Is it like a, is it like resting uh mean woman face? I can't I don't think I could say the actual term. No, no, you screen. can't. But it's it's like that, yeah. I mean I have news for you, Edix. I can't help it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay? Like, you deal with this for the rest of the season and probably for the rest of your life. I've already resigned to my fate. Looks like we're having an a ready call being asked in lobby, so we may be hopping back into this soon enough. Don't get the viewer's hopes up. Like, just because someone says R question mark doesn't mean, like... No, I w no, it's not about getting the viewer's hopes up, Lulu. It's about getting my hopes up. See, they're all saying R in chat. Yeah, it took like five minutes. I know the viewers can't see any of this, but you have to trust my word for it. Yeah, because you're a really trustworthy person. I appreciate that. Well, okay, like when you look at the dictionary yeah. and, and look up trustworthy, you just see a picture of Edict's face or something. Just kind right of terrifying, there. honestly. Why? <laughs> the world needs to see your lovely face. I don't know how to respond to that. All right. <laughs> Coming into King's Row, what kind of adjustments do you think that the Outcast could try to make on this map in particular? Not sure. Maybe we'll see some Symmetra strats on this defense. Maybe we'll see some Bastard strats. 
really? We haven't seen much of these teams, so... Aside from two matches, so... Really? Anything could go. This is the first time they're playing this map, correct? Yeah. Or for this season, of course. For this season, exactly. I want to see... I want to see Sharpshot to win playing more of the of the Farah, and it looks like maybe he can play whatever he wants if no one's gonna look at him. Exactly, more on the Farah, more on the Hanzo. I want to see more of that and see how the Outcasts prepare for them. Now it looks like tentatively they they might be going for Sharpshot to win on the May. All right. It'll be easier for Outcast to deal with the May because the May's most likely gonna be right in their face. Oh, never mind. Yeah, they're coming I've out with the. I've been lied to by my trustworthy partner. The now the Outcast coming out with um, with the Bastion. Now it's it's up to Storybook Villains to scout this and see what they really want to do. So who knows what they're gonna really end up running? So Storybook Villains coming out with the Far Mercy. Yeah, I'm showing no indication of wanting to swap. I already, I feel like we see the improvement on, on keeping track of the Sphere. You got the Anna shooting at him. You already have the Sigma putting barriers at the Pharah. This is more of what you need to see against the Sphere. The rotation's coming through from side storybook villains are relatively clean. Nobody gets chunked down or picked off. But yeah, now we're looking at sharp shots to win. But they have already brought the Slice Sword of Villains has already brought this fight right to them. But the anti nade on Bull of Bulls is going to send this fight into panic. The res comes out though, and Hyper Knight isolated the immortality field from CRX Wolves coming out. Nifa going down is pure chaos, Lulu. That was a great play from Story Vic Villains, cutting off the Bastion from getting any sort of value with the Sigma and Arissa, and just leaving. Leaving Hyper Knight all alone on the point. Yeah. He's if he could have looked around in that moment, like paused time and looked around in that moment and he just says, Where's my team? Just completely isolated. So I have a feeling he might have been asking that as it was going on without This without is why we need space time continuum bending. This is why we need we need um outlet comms check. Yeah. So the Outcast setting up up top. Um, in a loco in their back line. As Sigma in Ooh. Rudo alone goes up as Doofus uses his Ooh. Getting out the immortality field. The kill's not quite coming the way of Storybook Villains, but Oh, the barrage. They poured everything into that fight. To take them off the high ground. Yep. Setting up well for Outcast, they'll have five ults to make this retake and and really just settle down on this hard to cap point two of King's Row. Right, but they ha they'll have to muscle their way back to the corner, and it looks like Storybook Villains is going to get past the corner, so the contest might be coming very late on this point. That garage, the the Sigma setup was just too clean. The dragons come through. Bullet Bulls going down low to Arku's dragons in a look. The tank line falling down to storybook villains. Exactly <sighs> what they needed. Just, Just a quick one ultimate. Was. Quick yeah. ultimate wins the fight. Forces storybook villains to retreat and regroup. Yeah. And so, the side of storybook villains going back, swapping to the May is sharp shot to win. And what's really good from that fight from the outcasts. Is that they only used one ultimate to get there? Just a cooldown and an ultimate to get the a fast charge too. Yeah. So really, this defense could be solidifying. Now, an interesting, interesting setup up top, using both ultimates, the square and the bongo, at the same time, and a huge gravitic flux. Did Outcast predict that? But they're gonna have to drop the point. Flux coming out from the side of Outcast. The superchargers at Brutal Lone finds CRX Wolf. And Ina Loka finds Gerber. I think the drop down might have been a little bit late, Lulu. I've, all, all I have to say is, like, I've never seen a Bago window combo that's. that hasn't. has done so little damage. <laughs> the health bars were barely moving. Bull, bulls didn't really seem to. distress at all. 
Nobody on the side of storybook villains was phased whatsoever by that. And now they've already taken third point with four minutes left in the time bank. Now this will be an interesting fight because it is neutral. Well, Brutal alone will have his ultimate, but that's really used to play a little bit more aggressively most of the time. And here he goes in with the Meteor Strike. On to CRX Wolves, who has, has to use the Immortality Field. He gets slept and barely manages his way out. Now, I like what they're doing with the McCree. He's just all alone shooting up top. No one can get to him. Yeah. See that as he gets moved off. He's moved off by Kusagari. Yeah. High Noon comes out, but killed just Quite in time. Quite the bold like High Noon. Shades yeah. of grim reality, if anyone's been following since beta. But it looks like it's backfiring for them. Oh my god, these boobs have been. Oh. Boobs off entirely now. It's all Gerber alone on the point. Diva coming back on the Reaper. It'll have Wraith to maybe survive. Did he use Wraith to just recontest? Uh, it doesn't matter anymore. Flux comes out. Three minutes and five seconds for the side of Storybook villains. They look unstoppable. Uh, I've liked the positioning from Storybook villains before these fights, but whether it be like individual mistakes or just or just maybe poor alt usage, it seems like. Things have broken down once the fight started. They had a great opportunity on, on second point of King's Row to start cycling their ultimates and not press Q all at the same time and start like spacing out their ultimates and like trying to buy more time off the clock and maybe get a pick even with the square and the bongo. But they blew all of that and it allowed storybook villains to get their foot right back to get like their, their foothold right back into the, the power position and they just held on to it through the, the like the rest of third. Well, I mean, really you can credit to, to Inoloco, that Sigma ult during that combo really most likely stopped a lot of the DPS coming through. Yeah. And Kusogari with the huge boops, getting people off, both off the high ground and off the map, effectively mitigating any positional advantage from outcasts. Now, what would you like to see the Outcast try to do on the offense? It seems like everything they've been trying is just not quite up to par of story with villains. It's really hard to tell. I, considering we don't really know the hero pools, but... I'd I, I want them to go Moira just so they can have that coalescence. <laughs> but maybe I'm just I'm a little biased, though. Honestly. Now they're going to be running out with the Bastion strategy with no Symmetra. So the speed comes out and they're using the they're using the Sigma Shield of Haze to get into position. That's a dirty threat! And here comes Brutal alone. In a loco, just tearing them to shreds. Now it's just the tank line Haze all alone. So you quick wipe. No one, no one looked at the Reaper and he just... He just free shoots the bash and gets the easy pick. And with the it's been like the been the story of the game so far. And with the attack bastion, especially without a Symmetra, the whole team has to work as a unit and can't just follow in one after the other. Oh, he's going again. This bastion's probably done. Ooh, Arku gets the kill on Brutal alone. Brutal alone didn't see him, but the wall gets Hyper Knight and Nifa. And the May Freeze is gonna seal this fight. The opening pick doesn't matter. Arku finding another. Maybe there's an opportunity for the Outcast to get a quick regroup and rush on. I mean, we gotta give props to Storybook Villains. Seems like they're all positioning well and they're really playing around their DPS, their tank line. And the issue is, even, even if the Outcast get in right now, you see Neef swapping over to the Pharah off the Bastion, realizing it's probably not gonna work. They have a coalescence. They have the big plus. I say that. Here comes the dragon zoning them off the point. Now they have space to work with. The coalescence comes on. And the gravitic flux coming on the haze. Manages to stay alive. Sharp shots with getting Nifa down. The res comes through. Arku finding bowl of bowls. And slowly, the side of story with villains is getting zoned off the point. Definitely winnable for starting with Villain. It's 4 on 5 Vic Flux gets Brutal alone, Wraith Sound, and the Loco getting caught out by it. Falls down to about half. He's one solo. He 
They forced out the Nano Boost onto Hyper Knight to start cleaning up the fight, and now Kusugari and Bola Bulls are low on points. And the Bongo coming if out! If I were to start with Villains, I'd be very happy about the result of that fight. I mean, that was like uh, three extra ults at like the tail end of the fight. Just looking at the bongo alone on point, doing nothing for the still players. Oh, it hurts. Yeah, I'd be super happy if I was the side of Storybook Villains right now. Really, Gotta be feeling good about your defense. Surprise for Raj to kind of try to get this next fight. Not gonna, not gonna be easy with, especially on streets here. No, very, and very narrow. Nifa needs to look for a barrage quickly before the ultimates can force them off. And finding two picks, the supports going down. Rock actually connecting, but it doesn't matter. The DPS finding the early picks they need. But he Nifa decides to burn the barrage anyways. I think that's a little much. I agree. Very in that fight would, and, and the two stragglers were nowhere near the cart to stall or even even get their footing on this second part of uh, of of this payload point. Yeah, now the payload rounding oh, the corner. Oh, they're all spawning at the same time. The blizzard comes out and gets in a loco, or the dragon comes out and gets in a loco. Brutal alone trading all of these picks back with his with his death boss. I'm getting three kills. CRX Wolves caught alone, brutal alone doing the heavy lifting with the death blossom and the follow-up. I think that was a little bit of an overextend from the front line of Outcast. Nowhere near the line of sight of Gerber there. Just easy pickings for the Reaper. Right, and they had to know after all this time that the Death Blossom was going to come out. What do you think the Outcast can do to get get themselves back in here, capturing the second point? I think they need to initiate with Valkyrie right here and just damage reduce all five of them. Hopefully, get some foothold on this economy and maybe use maybe use their newly gained ults to just to win this next fight. The Valk comes out, Gravitic Flux comes out, Coalescence. But the Flux was used in Outcast backline, not finding much value. Nano Boost comes out onto Arku, who's gonna take the high ground, but pulled off. Gravitic Flux coming out from Haze. A barrage, but not finding anything. Brutal alone picking off. Brutal alone in the back line of the outcast, raping out, buying the the space necessary for the storybook villains to crowd the remaining members of the outcast. <sighs> Brutal alone. He is really pumping iron right now. I'm restoring you. I think Cas could have did a little better on that nano. I understand it was a panic nano, so. But I think if they ulted that fair, there would have been a lot more immediate pressure, and which could have forced out an early beat or an overcommitment. And you know I'm a and you know I'm a main tank player, and I really appreciate the nuance of Bull Bull's pull of of Arku off the high ground when he was nanoed, buying the extra seconds to let the nano boost wait, uh, fade off. Dragon like Arku the Arku. splits Great. them up. Kusagari just living in their backline. Arku finding Bull of Bulls. Hyper Knight's gonna pop the Bongo. But. Oh? The Bongo stays alive despite Inoloco being right there the whole time. Which finally goes down to Kusagari, but. An advantage for the time is with the Outcasts. And with only 23 seconds, it has to be. Bull of Bulls pops the Bongo behind Shield. It gets focused down by Hyper Knight. Good play by him. Bull of Bulls goofed out. And he does go down. So barring a oh Gerber goes down to the Ah, uh, here comes the cleanup from Nifa. It's looking scary for outcasts. Nifa with the barrage. And with only Lit Cat on the point, this should be clean up, but an overtime push that was it's honestly too close for comfort. I mean tell like Outcast is Getting a little nervous. They're, they're getting advantages, but they're still having to use ults for one reason or another. And their focus just, just looks a little bit off. Exactly. Well, here come the outcasts rounding the first corner with some ultimates. They're going to initiate with the flux a little bit behind the corner so it won't find too much value as the side of Storybook Villains puts a blizzard down on point. 
Aren't you finding the pick on Brutal alone? This is exactly what the Outcast needed. Picks are coming through for their side. Sharp Shot Twin goes down. This is going to be a reset from Storybook Villains. Bull Bulls fortifies on point just to stall. Yeah. Even this one man stall is taking up a lot of time. It's it's crazy. 40 seconds. Yeah, this is one fight territory. And with Cole yeah, less it's going to be hard. Up the time. A huge pick onto Brutal alone is going to mean that Nifa is uncontested for just a little bit longer. Just so important with their spawns. And that's all they gain. Huge out. graphitic flux and a huge coalescence. It's gonna send the entirety of the outcast into panic mode with only 15 seconds left. Somebody's gonna have to touch the point. CRX Wolves wants to. Ah, uh, gets picked off by Bola Bulls. And Dragon comes out on point, but I don't think they're gonna even be able to touch. Hayes gets on point. But the Bastion, Brutal alone swaps to the Bastion just to clean up any contest. Hyper Knight likely gets focused down and booped off here, yeah. And the Bongo is going to solidify this. Yeah, Storybook Villains is going to take King's Row. And the series 3-0 to zero so far. Man, I thought it was a lot better from Outcast. They were getting advantages on a lot of the fights, but whether it be through just slightly misused ult or just the lack of target focus, they they just felt like they had to use the ult to clean up. And I feel like a lot of this is a lack of, maybe a lack of confidence issue. I'm not exactly sure because, I mean, I don't know, but it's about like getting getting in there and just being confident when you have advantage and, and just taking the fight by the reins and just seeing if you can win it. And they did a lot better on getting into those winnable situations, but now it's about capitalizing on them. So this last map, I'd love to see the Outcast get their just just to get a, get a map off of the Storybook Villains, even though they've lost the series already three to zero. A three to one is a lot better, especially for map differential, than a four to zero. And it'd just be great for their confidence, knowing that they can beat most likely one of the early favorites to win the whole league. And right, Storybook Villains, if they win, they go up, they are, they're up 2-0 to zero now on the record, and their map differential at plus 7 right now, tentatively, if this map were to end in a draw, which it's Havana, it probably won't. But if it did, they would still, with just a plus 3 off of this match alone, be at the top of the league standings already after week 1. And a 4-0 would definitely put them there. They'd be one map ahead of everyone else, right? Two maps if they go 4-0. But I would love to see the outcast, you know, put their foot down and say, enough is enough. We need to we need to focus down and just take just take this map for our own confidence and just to and if this is one of the stronger teams and they can take a map off of them, that's gotta do a lot for their mental. Definitely. Still early in the season, a lot could change. I mean, last year's last season's winners, Furious Unicorns, at finished six in seeding in the regular season last season so and they ended up winning pretty convincingly too yeah against the 20 and 0 boosted by the way everyone thought sort of like the the patriots of what year was that do you know it was like 2008 i think 2008 new england patriots for those who don't watch football were entirely undefeated up until the super bowl where they were defeated by the were the new york giants 9 and 7 that season they were, they had a pretty bad record in the regular season. Right. I think they were nine and seven actually. Yeah. Yeah. So anything is anything is possible here in Owlid. I think I think it's pretty transferable. Um, as yeah, totally. Same skills, same. Same skill same, set. Same, you know, Dave, you just got like a giant car instead of a egg shaped ball. Yeah. So I, I would love to see from Outcast a more. A more confident defense. What do you think they should try out on on the side on the defense here? I wonder if they're gonna do that close hold that Shanghai did in this map, where they just send the fire over the spawn roof and just spam. I think they're actually yeah. gonna do it. Yeah, they're coming through. 
Yeah, it looks like they're going to go for a close hold strategy. And I've seen a lot of teams start picking up this 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 style of playing on Havana because it allows you if you hold back at the at the building, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but if you hold back on that on that high building and you kind of only have one fight. So I like this close hold. Gets you guaranteed extra fight. Anti. But oh, it's just so far. Oh, Brood alone goes down. Yeah, he also gets here's... the Steez on the Tracer. And... Let's see if... I'm curious if... Servant Villains is going to keep his dive composition. Maybe they're just trying... They, they've won the series. Maybe they're just trying to see how it's going to work. See Bull of Bulls going in. Gerbert finding the pick on Sharp Shot to win. But Gerbert getting picked. Lickhead finding Hyper Knight. Oh, it's all chaos. And the spawn is right there for the side of Storybook Villains, so any picks are going to mean so much more. Nifa going down, and now it's just Gerbert left. Getting eventually dismantled by the Storybook Villains dive. Yeah, they kind of, kind of just left Gerbert out alone to just die. Unlucky for the Anna. And after Probably trying... one of the worst feelings as a flex support, too. Just zero peels, and hello, hello. there's nothing you can do. Yeah, and after the close hold attempt, Nifa's gonna swap over to the Reaper. And a more traditional comp for once the Outcast is used to running is going to come out. The classic, I need to switch the Reaper because they have a Winston. <laughs> Full proof strategy right here. Bull of Bulls missing the jump trying to get in. Sharp shot to win dashes up, but the immortality field forced out. Hayes is gonna find a pick on Kusagari with the Rock. Brutal alone onto Gerbert. Ooh. Getting split apart by the dive, but eventually the side of the outcast is able to reconsolidate onto Hyper Knights and they can find the picks they need. And I think that's the key with this composition versus the dive. Just gotta stay solid, stick together, and just burn whoever the, burn the monkey or diva. Check this out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, so now, storybook villains on the point. Bull of Bulls jumping up, the anti nade comes through, but blocked. But Hyper Knight's all alone. Completely isolated. And Storybook Villains getting the picks that they need. Nifa nanoed. But how much will the Nano Reaper do without the Orisa Shield left? Hayes completely separated, and the Blade will come out just to secure the kills. <sighs> it's only Arku on point. Ooh, what happened there? The Winston created a lot of chaos by jumping in alone with the Primal Rage, forcing kind of a panic rotation from sort from Outcast, which caused the split from which caused the decisive split for Storybook Villains to just basically pick off one by one. Yeah, and I think the key was really that I think Hyper Knight thought the rest of the team had dropped down already, so he went down from the high ground position to go contest the cart that was rolling through and. Bull of Bulls was up there causing chaos with a primal and just forcing everyone back so the rest of the team could just isolate him. That one's a card. They, the Side Outcast will have the high ground position for now. But now back onto the Arisa Sigma for Storybook Villains for point two. Blizzard will come in and a preemptive, I'd like to say, Reaper Ultimate. And Brutal alone getting the picks on the Doomfist. The Flux will come out to maybe turn the fight. Hayes gets a pick on the Sharp Shot. But Gerbert's gone. Hyper Knight's gone. Oh, everyone's gone for Outcast. Feels like the com feels like another common theme of Outcast is they get these they get these solid initiations and then after that it, they almost look a little bit lost and everybody kind of just splits up. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of these things is just oh, brutal alone goes to the punch in and doesn't get the value, but Nifa goes to capitalize, overextends himself, so now it's an even fight. You see the outcast positioning back of cart as Inaloko just ins into them completely. A big anti coming out from Gerbert, and Ark is able to find a capitalization on to Sharp Shot to win. Hyper Knight Nano trying to find picks. Bongo's in the Storybook Villains backline and 
Meteor Strike in the Flux, find Nifa and Narku, and the rest of this fight is over. Arku at the best position in the world, it's McCree, he was just free shooting from the top right window. I'm not sure why he decided to just drop down. Yeah, especially in a fight like that, when everyone's trying to focus on pulling and get control of the cart. If you're on a high ground position, it's so hard to dislodge someone up there. Like, felt like he just had all day to shoot from there. Yeah. Now Storybook Villains working with a blizzard. Arku coming up to a to high noon and a death blossom for Nepo soon. And Storybook Villains able to get all the way from the end of the point to the final corner, almost getting into under the castle. And here comes the blizzard. And the engagement from Brutal alone, finding the pick on CRX Wolves. The signal it's almost unnecessary. Nifa finds Litcat. Nifa's still in the back line contesting cart, but no. It, this is one fight territory. Fortunately for Outcast, this is probably the hardest position, the hardest point to cap in all of Overwatch. The spawns are just super close and all that high ground for the defending team to work with. And a big Very answer need coming through. Arku finding it. Nifa really tasting the blood in the water goes for the Death Blossom. And Lit Cat and Kusagari are going to have to back up for now. I think this will be a very telling fight because right now Storybook Villains has the ult advantage, but if this fight goes south for them, then you're going to see a lot more ultimates coming out for Outcast. Yeah, and the spawn advantage as well from the Outcast could turn this in their favor. The Outcast have chosen to keep Hyper Knight on the Reinhardt. And here comes the Coalescence. Inside the Outcast not really backing up to respect it, but a square comes out. Even it finds a pick through the square under Sharp Shot. Brutal alone coming in, not finding the picks that he needs. And this will likely be a reset. Oh, Brutal alone getting pinned, but they. The Flux taking Hyper Knight out of his pin and onto the ground. That has got to be heartbreaking. Now with Storybook Villains finding the kills that they need. It's all about the stall coming out from the side of the Outcast. Gerber's just going to have to get on point with Hyper Knight. A huge anti-nade again and again. He's finding these anti-nades, but that's not doing anything. The ult's coming the way of Storybook Villains. That'll be the point. You gotta give credit to Inoloco. That was that was a great Sigma ult to counteract any plans that Outcast had of getting an advantage from that pin Doomfist. Ugh, and I'm not even sure if a play like that could even be intentional. If you could even plan that, but I think they're trying to combo the Doom ult and the Sigma ult. Hmm. But I think maybe the Doom ult was online first, so they thought they were gonna so they they're gonna just use that alone and then their Sigma got their ult and just spammed Q, but Yeah. I, either way, it ended, ended up being great for Storybook Villains. That's an interaction that I quite honestly haven't even seen yet. A pin getting cancelled by a group of Dick Flux. Great you new every day. You know, maybe at least change it so Sigma can get stunned out of his Gravitic Flux. Because it's super weird whenever, you know, the enemy on a sleeps you in midair when you're playing Sigma. And you see, he's like, you're sleeping, but you still see his fist coming down and everyone else goes down. You still get a 4k. Yeah. Kind of strange how they let that through, but nothing we can do. We're just going to have to live with the state of Overwatch for God knows how long, really. You gonna send angry letters to Blizzard, Lulu? What are letters? Ah, right, it's 2019. I forget. It looks like... I think everyone just posts on the forums, anyway. Or it goes on Reddit. Does anyone read the forums? Someone's got it. <laughs> so, Storybook Villains is trying a close hold strat, but already a little bit split up. Bola Bulls is walled off, has to use Fortify, but the Teleport is there, but Brute, the Bull of Bulls doesn't take it. It gets picked because of it, Arku finding the pick on Google alone. Wow. Sharpshoot, Sharpshooter already has his Barrage. Arku finding the pick on him, though. Just gets his Barrage, but they finally kill him. 
And CRX Wolves already has the the square, the amplification matrix ready. This so. next fight will most likely be up to whether the window can just zone out Swordbook Villains versus Sharp Shot to win, getting that angle for the barrage. And I think the engagement from Sharp Shot to win has to be just perfect. The, the overall engagement from Storybook Villains, that is. So that Sharp Shot to win could find the angle. And they spotted him out and it looks, and they realize he's going for it, but it doesn't matter. The picks come through. Even fight on cart, no. Side the Outcast is down one. With both tanks remaining, Arku will likely either go down or just have to get out. That was a nice set play from Swordbook Villains, using the Sigma Shield to protect the Pharah from any threat of getting shot down during that barrage. And it's like at a certain point, they knew that Sharp Shot to Win was going for it, but what could they have done? I think once they, they see the Pharah, they gotta, they gotta know that she has barrage, because she was just free shooting for like a whole minute on the that first fight. Gerbert's anti-nade comes through, the Sigma ult, Coming through from Cyceroic Villains. Where's the Blizzard? Where's the Blizzard? The Blizzard's at the back of oh, the outcast. <laughs> Hyper Knight's all alone. I hate to see it. Gravitic Flux is going to send them all back to spawn while the Blizzard just goes into Kansas. I think he got. I think he got moved while he was channeling that Blizzard. So, could it have been the Flux? Flux? Maybe. I'd have to look at the replay from. Blizzard's replay client. Oh, you hate to see it. But I, I'm pretty sure he got moved during it. It's interesting now. You see Widowmakers on both sides. Brut alone finding the critical headshot onto Nifa. And now Sharp Shot to win is just free to spam. Ugh. Easy cleanup for size for the villains. You, you see. You see Outcast trying to go for the double hit scan just to deal with the fear and the widow, but it's really hard to run a hit scan in this meta just because of all the shields you have to shoot through and Sigma's what how is the David Shield being able to just move where he it wants to? It's all about finding against a double shield playing a hit scan, it's all about finding the off angles and finding them fast. So a supercharger out on an island. Arku getting picked off. Lick Cat finding the kills with the Coalescence and the Damage Orb. Look who's getting the pick on the CRX Wolves. This is going to be a reset. Oh, is he going to get caught off? No. Barely gets back to spawn, but only 30 seconds and a dominant hole coming out from Storybook Villains. We're into one fight territory, Lulu. Yep. And not much to work with comparatively. Just. Just a nano sigma. Hyper Knight's clearly had enough on the Eraser. And here comes the Gravitic Flux, but again, behind the shields without the team in position, Gravitic Flux isn't going to do anything. The Immortality Field comes out. Now, no longer that available. Here comes the Gravitic Flux from Inoloco. Going to find Gerbert. Arku and Haze picking off the tank. Also, on point. Um, they're on point. Sharp shot to win. Finding. Hyper Knight and the Reds onto Brutal Lone is going to start swinging this fight into their favor. Someone has to be on point. Haze will stay on point. Nifa goes down to Sharp Shot to win, who is now uncontested. Here comes the Barrage. Immortality Field going to save CRX Wolves and Nifa. But it's just CRX Wolves. And Sharp Shot the... to win was down at 1 HP. <sighs> you will just like... Floating up there just waiting for a hit scan to shoot them. That's what, the, that's what they get paid for. When you play those heroes. Yeah. Gotta be able to clean up. Let's see this play from Brutal alone. Meteor strike when everything goes wrong and then just clean up kills. This and is I mean, also I'm... a fun hero. Yeah. So many fun heroes that we're seeing today. Gotta love it. So what do you think the main factor is in leading Storybook Villains to this dominant win? I just think, I think overall they were more coordinated Ooh, during the fights. They had a plan. They had a plan in action, and were able to stick together and not be phased by anything. Uh, Outcast really threw at them. And I feel like the side of Storybook Villains as well just understood their win conditions and understood like 
what to go for and how to how to get it. So congratulations to Straybook Villains. They now improved to plus to two and zero, oh, and with a plus eight map differential, they're now the number one team in the standings after week one. And it's for the side of the outcasts, they will drop to one and one with a minus one differential. Anybody and who's playing Storybook Villains is going to have to look out for them. They're going to have to watch out for it's just clean, clean far up play, clean crossfires and shield usage. And yeah, congratulations for the dominant win. Do you have anything else to, to add to that, Lulu? No, I just hope whoever plays them next week is ready. Yeah, absolutely. Not looking at. <laughs> Not looking at one of the teams rep that we represent. <laughs> but that'll do it from us. Um, I'm Edix, and I've been with Lulu, and enjoyed casting this game.